Hey there, it's Sam. We talked about what happens behind the scene when you visit a website in the last video, but what actually makes a website a website? In short, a website comprises of three components, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Let's take a look at them in more details. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and it forms the layout of a web page. You can think of it as the skeleton of a building, which forms the foundation of a web page. The latest version of HTML is version 5, and therefore the number 5 in its logo. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet, and is responsible for prettifying the layout. All the colors, fancy effects, animations, and etc. you see on a web page are all done by using CSS. The latest version of CSS is version 3, and therefore the number 3 in its logo. And finally, we have JavaScript. JavaScript gives functionality to your web page. It handles the logic, for example, submitting the form or adding items in the shopping cart. JavaScript is a programming language and shouldn't be confused with Java, which is another programming language for backend development. Let's make it concrete. Imagine we are drawing a sketch of a building. If we're comparing to a sketch, HTML would just be the draft outline of my building. By adding CSS, I'm adding colors to my sketch. However, right now our building doesn't have a purpose. It could be a residential home, a hospital, or restaurants, we don't know. And this is where JavaScript comes into action. JavaScript gives functionality to our building. Now we can name it as a pizzeria. Now let's take a look at the structure of HTML. A HTML file typically consists of three main components. The root element, that wraps around everything, the head element, which mainly consists of metadata for a page, and lastly the body element, which consists of everything we see in a web page. Here is an example on how an actual HTML code would look like. Don't panic, I'll go through them one by one. The first thing to know is to create HTML elements by using angled bracket. And each element has a start tag and a close tag. Line 1 is a special HTML tag that doesn't need to be closed. It is there just to tell the browser that we're using HTML5 instead of the other versions. Line 2 is the root tag, and it's closing on line 12. Every HTML file should contain this root tag, and it should wrap around the whole HTML documents. Inside the root tag, on line number 3, we have the head tag. Again, we put metadata like page title, language, and screen size inside the head tag. The special tag on line 4 is known as the command tag. Now comment are for reference only and will not be rendered inside the browser. Developers leave comments inside code to emphasize their intention, which really helps when collaborating with others. Then we have the body tag on line 9. And this is where we put all the visual elements of our website. Now behind the scene, the browser arrange all these HTML tags in a structure called the DOM tree, which stands for the Document Object Model. Don't let its name fool you, it's actually very easy. So each element will form a node in a tree. If we put another element inside an element, it will form a child node. For example, the root element has two children nodes, the head element and the body element. If we put more element inside the head element and also the body element, they'll become the children node of the head and body node respectively. Okay, and that's it. DOM is simple as that. Key takeaways for this lesson, we have three front-end weapons. HTML is responsible for the layout, CSS is responsible to prettify the layout, and JavaScript gives functionalities to our website. When the browser renders the HTML elements, it will structure those elements inside what we call a DOM tree. That's enough theory for now. In the next lesson, we are going to get our hand dirty and write our first website. I'll see you there.